So I share with you. We have the manager to come out. The real hard one. The real style. <laughs> God has really, really worked on me on there. As much as it feels that I have blessed them, they have blessed me even more. It was through the trials that um, I had to learn. You know, we all learn through all these lessons. So just a quick glimpse of my life. Um, I have four beautiful children. They're all adults. Um, I have two grandma. Uh, I'm a grandma of two babies. Wow. I'm a grandma of two. I love them to death. Truly, grandparents being being grandparents are a lot more enjoyable than mother. <laughs> For real, it's really real. <laughs> you love them and you give them back. <laughs> you spell them and you give them back. <laughs> but um, I was truly blessed when I was young. I'm, a, I'm one of nine. I have uh, eight more siblings. Uh, my sister Esther there, they're over there as well. Um, I was married at a very young age. Um, I don't condone this, but I do share how the struggle of the teenage nowadays. I had my oldest when I was 16, a junior in high school. Um, not proud, but it was a blessing in disguise that I needed. I was, I was challenged in my own personal life, in my home. We had abuse. We grew, I grew up in an abusive home, and it was. I thought it was normal. And I grew up, and they married my love of my life, and it, it, all, it continued a pattern. I married the same father as I did to my husband. But it was a blessing. My husband and I have been married for almost 20 years. Um, six years ago, God called him home. God didn't call him home. He wanted to go home. <laughs> he was battling cancer. So I became a widow at, a, at 40, I'll say my age, I'm not sure. 40 years old. Um, but the, the, the story, my journey of my life started then, the real journey of finding who you are. As mothers, we forget. We forget who we are. We become who our husbands want us to become. We become what our children want us to become. And in the midst of it, you lose your identity. You lose who you really want. Your, your, your passion, your desire has been put on the side. Right, moms? Do we all agree on that? Yeah. So we start following the pattern as God has said, it helped me to our husbands. So we fulfill, I speak of myself, I fulfill the love and desire of my husband. And I forgot my passion and the journey of it. And I, I didn't realize how important that was until my husband passed and everybody remembered me as, oh, you're Zan's wife. Oh, you're Timmy's dad, a mom. You're Tyler's mom. I'm like, hey, guys, they got a name. <laughs> I have a name. <laughs> but they, it got lost through the shuffle, right, mom? People forget your name. And I had to find out my identity with that name. So I had to relearn again, who was I? Dug in the word of God and find out who was I, who am I? And through the process, and I'm still learning, I discovered who I am and whose I am. And in that process of learning that who, who I am and whose I am, I continue to grow and grow and grow and start just opening doors. You know, as married women, married women in here, I highly encourage you to love on your husband. I've been through the journey where the last couple of six years and I've seen marriages and then I, my friends, my sisters, everyone, you know, they share about their marriage. And now I'm on the, on the outside looking in and they're talking about their marriage and I would laugh about it. I'm like, whew, I ain't getting married again. <laughs> oh, skip that one. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I thank God I get to minister in your life and said, love on your husband because you don't want to be on this side. And I always have to share that with these married women. And they look pretty on the other side of the fence, yeah? Well, us widows or single moms may look, make it look easy and it's fun, but the reality is not as easy. I tip my hat to all these single women that, that survived, you know, that went through the journey of living, raising their children by themselves. I, I love you and I probably bow down to you for the journey that you have to take to raise as a single parent, father and mother as well. Now that I'm a single mom, I'm like, wow, I couldn't imagine how I would be without my husband. I, I didn't have to worry about a back of finance because he took care of it. <laughs> I didn't worry about the plumbing going down because he's going to take care of it. <laughs> I didn't worry about disciplining the kids because he's got it. But as single moms, we struggle. Not struggle, but they got a little bit more challenge than us, us women that has a spouse to, to guide us through and, and make decisions. You know, that's what I miss about my husband is decision-making. 
It's tough, yeah, Victoria, being a single, making a decision on your own, not someone to talk over it. Should I do, should I not? Can I, can I not? You know, help you walk through the process of, process of elimination. I really miss him for that journey. But I thank God he had put men in my life that are men of God, that I know which door to, which men to talk to that, that's the same heart, same spirit. And I got brothers like that. I call them all my brothers. I got like 10 brothers of, of God that I minister. I go to them and ask them um, men advice. I have three boys, so that's tough. But I still beat them up. No matter how much you can, I would chop the cherry tree down. <laughs> He's not like six four, but I'll make him look like you're five feet. <laughs> but um, mothers, uh, this is for mothers. I, I encourage you to love on your husbands for you married women. Love on your husbands while you have them. And I'm sure the husbands are clapping because they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but truly, love on your husband. And single moms, I honor you and respect you, man. You guys have journeyed through this harder than any of us could. And I thank you guys for just trusting God. Just trust God in the journey. You know, when God took my husband, I, I, I cried to him and I said, um, I said, I remember the day my husband, my husband passed, the day before he passed. He was such a hard man, local boy. <laughs> it was the day before he passed, he said, Please forgive me for all my sins that I've done and I put you through. I said, you stubborn man, you waited till this time. <laughs> Come on, you guys can understand some of those local boys. Yeah. Right? Sometimes gets you. And I remember him saying that, and I'm like, why did you wait so long? But I was so thankful that he found peace with God. You know, he said, please forgive me for all that I've done. I said, I forgive you. And then they said, okay, Lord, I'll keep him. <laughs> I'll keep him if I know I have to take care of him. I'll keep him. But um, God had better plans. And then when I told him, it's okay. If God's calling you, it's okay. It was the hardest thing to ever tell your spouse. But I remember crying. I said, it's okay. So when he passed the next day, I remember crying to God and saying, Lord, what now? You know, what now? But he he put the scripture in my heart as in Isaiah 40, 13, I think. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that's the scripture that I ran with. It's, um, we're like eagles, you know? Run up high, look above, and look down. Not look down at people, but look down at your problems. And then find a solution. We all go through it. I was just sharing my sister as I was coming this whole week, I was trying to prepare and oh, the challenge that comes. <laughs> Knowing that God's going to, that I was going to come out, I was so strong. But I just sat there, just come on, God, that get me through this one because I got to make it to church <laughs> in one piece. But I'm just here to encourage you, moms. I love you guys, and you guys don't know. If you don't know, I will tell you now. You're beautiful, you're wonderfully made, you're a success, and you're the best thing that ever happened to any any kid. Maybe your own or adopted or Hanai. You're the best thing and the best love that they can ever get. And you are the greatest helpmate to your significant other. So know that, know that you're special, that you're somebody. And somebody needs you in your world that I can't reach, but only you can. But, um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.